Hi everyone, I'm Ali, I'm an architect and today we're going to talk about becoming an architect in the UK if you are an internationally trained architect. So let's go. Okay, so this video is looking at people who have trained to be an architect uh, internationally, so not in the UK and not in the EU. It's slightly different rules apply to EU citizens at the moment. To be an architect in the UK, so to use the term architect to be a construction professional, you must be registered with the ARB, which is the Architects Registration Board, uh, and that is a different body to the RIBA. So the RIBA is essentially a voluntary members club, and the ARB is the legal body that governs whether an architect is legally allowed to practice in the UK. You must be on the ARB's actual list of names in order to call yourself an architect in the UK, um, being a member of the RIBA is something different and it's voluntary. There are two videos on those I've done before, um, on the RIBA and the ARB, trying to explain the difference, uh, but that's kind of the critical thing to understand, is that you must be registered with the ARB to use the title. So yeah, that's kind of first things first. Second, I'm just going to quote directly from the ARB's website, and I will also drop some links below to some of their most useful bits of their website. It is a bit confusing. In order to do this video, I did email them as well to try and clarify some things <laughs> because it was a little bit confusing to me too. Um, disclaimer, obviously, I am entirely trained in the UK, qualified in the UK, and been a UK citizen my whole life, so I'm trying to kind of learn this in order to explain it. Um, but the best thing to do is to check with the ARB, it's particularly about your specific circumstances, and you can email them. I'll link again, the links below is to their website, and there's details on how to contact them if you need to. The quote is, the ARB does not directly recognise any qualifications from outside the, e the UK, other than those listed under the Professional Qualifications Directive 2005-36-EC, when held by nationals of EU member states or those with EU rights. So essentially that's a particular quote to deal with Brexit um, and there is different rules if you're EU trained. Uh, this video is not about that, this video is about if you're internationally trained, um, so outside the UK and outside the EU. Therefore, if you hold an overseas qualification obtained outside the EU or the UK, or a non-recognised UK qualification, which can happen too if you're a UK student but you trained um, doing a degree that wasn't um, accredited, then you have to do the same process. Basically, you need to pass, pass the ARB's examination for equivalence to prescribed qualification. Thankfully, it's also called the prescribed examination. <laughs> and these are what you need to be undertaking to become an architect in the UK. Okay, so from here on out, it kind of follows the same process as becoming an architect in the UK from scratch. Essentially, there are three parts to it. The ARB is asking you to show, well, to do a pres prescribed examination for part one and a prescribed examination for part two. And these are essentially just a sort of process to prove that your education internationally is in line with the education you would have received in the UK. If you've watched my video on becoming an architect in the UK, you know that in the UK it's a three part system, part one, part two, part three. Um, and you need all three in order to be registered with the ARB and use the title architect. The same is true here, so you need the prescribed examination passed for part one. You must do them sequentially, part one, and then the prescribed examination for part two, proving that the experience you have and the qualifications you have are in line with what you would have received in the UK, basically covered all the same topics and everything. And then you also need to have done a part three. Now, the thing that's a little bit confusing on the ARB's website is that they say you don't need to do this in order. So basically what they're saying is that some students find it useful when they first come to the UK to undertake a part three course because it gives you so much information about the UK's legal system and everything that it's quite helpful to do that first. So basically they don't say you have to do it after your part one and two prescribed examinations, you can do it whenever you want, but that you really need to be able to get into a part three course to do that. So that depends on your qualifications up to this point and it's at the discretion of any school offering a part three course, whether they let you on that course or not they may ask you to have the prescribed examinations in order to sit your part three. And the ARB said that many candidates find it useful to sit the part three first because they can use that information to do the prescribed examinations and they can use it as evidence for the prescribed examinations. So that is something that to me feels like you should uh, ask the ARB directly about your personal situation and qualifications that you have. But essentially in order to get on the register in the UK and call yourself an architect, you still need the equivalent of all three parts. Part one and part two must be done sequentially, part one first then part two. Part three can be sat after those or before those but at the discretion of a part three school allowing you onto their course. And once you have the equivalent, part one, part two and part three, 
and have passed the part three, then the ARB will allow you onto their register. Uh, then you pay a fee and you're named on the register as an architect. You have to give them your place of employment. And that's how the public can search you and check that you are an architect. So, for example, if you search Alison Mudd in the architects, you'll see that I work at Eliza Morrison in London and I'm on the architects register. So basically, it's just that. And that allows you then to use the title architect legally in the UK. You can then choose to also be a member of the RIBA, but that is a voluntary organisation and it's not anything to do with being an architect in the UK in the sense of legally. So the prescribed examination consists of an application and then a comparative matrix, which is where you are mapping your experience to date against the general criteria. There's a link below as well to the ARB's general criteria, which is literally guidance that their examiners check off. So essentially they're saying, does this person qualify with all these things? That's what you're going to be marked against. They give you that information on the ARB's website. What they're asking is that you prove that you've done that kind of work in the past, you map it against the criteria, and then you provide supporting material basically to set to prove that you've done that. So you submit that material to the ARB and they assess that material. And if you pass more than 50% of the general criteria, then you're invited for an interview with the ARB. And then they just, again, check your competence is in line with what it would be if you were trained in the UK. If you pass the interview as well, then they will award you the prescribed examination for part one and then the prescribed examination for part two these are separate but you need both um, and then basically you have the equivalent of those to a student undertaking a bachelor's and a master's degree in the UK it's not like a three-year course or anything it's submitting evidence then you you know they review it the ARB review it and then they invite you for an interview and there are examination dates throughout the year uh, usually a few every month um, where you could submit your prescribed examination for so it's a much shorter process than going back to the beginning. The only bit that you do need to do is the part three course in the UK. And a lot of these are a year in length, um, but there are shorter ones like the AA one that I did, the Architectural Association. But it very much depends on where you're going in the UK, where you're going to study and what the kind of closest and best part three um, course is for you, which we can discuss in other videos if that's useful. And also one thing to note is that this uh, regulation changes at the moment this is current from August 2020 this is what the ARB is doing but if there's any agreements made to recognize qualifications between countries in the future then that would be something that would potentially change this and I'll try and keep up on it but we'll see um, hopefully if you are an international architect and you're watching this this is a little bit helpful um, if not then drop it in the comments below what I could kind of try and firm up for you um, for me, it generally seems much more understandable now, but then again, I was completely kind of raised in the uh, UK education system for architects. So obviously it seems simpler to me than maybe to you, but I hope it's helpful and answers some of your questions. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye. Is that helpful? <laughs> it's kind of a nightmare, honestly. So the prescribed examination consti consti consists. <laughs>